A blessed evening to everyone. Once again, welcome to our daily devotional. We are now in the beginning of another book, which is Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Today, we will begin with the first chapter. Many consider this letter of Paul to the Ephesians as the most profound work in the Bible. This book of Ephesians is full of some of the most important and powerful revelations about the believer's union with Christ found anywhere in the scriptures. Paul says that the truth he is presenting in this letter were mysteries previously unknown. That is why Paul specifically mentioned in his prayers for the saints to be enlightened about the riches of God's glorious inheritance in the saints. In verses 16 to 18, Paul wrote, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. Then in verse 18, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Praise God! What a wonderful word from this letter. In this letter, Paul establishes the value of our salvation in Christ and the blessings we obtain from it. Paul emphasizes the powerful truth of our position in Christ. In verse 3, right after a short greeting, Paul gets right to the point. He starts praising God for the great spiritual blessings that we already have in Christ. Take note, blessings that we already have in Christ. Chapter 1 verse 3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. The phrase, who has blessed us, is in the past tense, which means that there was a point of time in the past when all these blessings were obtained and given to us. Paul is describing what is already ours. In heavenly places means in the spiritual realm. In Christ, we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings. These things are now spiritual realities. Our spiritual man is already complete. As we believe and act in faith, these spiritual blessings become physical realities. Do you want to know what are your blessings in Christ? Here is a partial list of some of these blessings that Paul mentioned in this chapter only. Number one, we have been adopted as God's children. You can find it in verse 5. In the Roman culture, by adoption, the old ties were disconnected and the new father now became full owner of the child with all legal rights. In Rome, a slave could have the full rights as that of the Roman citizens through adoption. Through adoption, the believer now has had all ties detached from his old master and has now become the property of Heavenly Father as an heir and joint heir with Jesus Christ. Then number two, he made us accepted in the beloved that is found in verse 6 what a wonderful thing this is it would have been more than any of us deserve to be forgiven by god but then to be given certain rights and privileges would have been more than we could have expected the lord went further than that he has actually accepted us number three we have redemption through jesus blood in verse 7, the Greek word for redemption here literally means the releasing effect 
or liberation procured by the payment of a ransom. The price paid for our redemption was the life of Jesus, that is, Jesus' blood. This redemption, according to Hebrews, was eternal and was intended to purify us from all our iniquity and brings us to serve the living God. Number four, we have the forgiveness of our sins. In verse 7, Paul is saying that it is through the riches of God's grace that we have been received forgiveness for our sins. There is nothing we can do to obtain forgiveness except to humble ourselves and receive forgiveness as a gift through faith in Christ. Then number five, we have obtained an inheritance in verse 11. This inheritance is ours now. It includes everything that belongs to Christ because we are joint heirs with Him. Although we won't see the fullness of this inheritance until Christ personally takes the reign. But we can pray for things to be done here on earth as they are in heaven. As much as we can release our faith, we can enjoy our inheritance now. The number six, we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. In verse 13, at salvation, we each receive a brand new spirit. It is free from sin and totally pure. Then we are immediately sealed by the Holy Spirit for the purpose of preservation. A barrier is formed to keep sin out and retain the purity of our born-again spirit. The number seven, we have been given the same power that raised Christ from the dead. That is in verses 19 to 20. Paul wants us not only to know God's power, but the greatness of God's power. And then the exceeding greatness of God's power. This exceeding greatness of God's power is towards us. That means that it is for us and our benefit. Some people get glimpses of God's power, but very few only have the revelations that it is for us and at our disposal. So Paul is describing what is already ours. These are not blessings to be sought after, but rather blessings to be discovered and enjoyed. Those who have put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ are not headed to victory. They are coming from a victory already accomplished. Praise God for this wonderful revelation. Kailangang malaman natin ito, who we are in the Spirit, who we are in Christ, our position when we receive Jesus Christ. Because understanding these truths is a major key in living a victorious Christian life. As the Word of God says in John, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Brothers and sisters, this is our glorious inheritance in Christ. What a wonderful encouragement from the book of Ephesians. God bless everyone and see you next time.